There is no denying that learning to code is hard. But then again, it's a very rewarding type of career. There's so many things to learn and it also makes pretty good money. And that's part of the reason why I decided to go into this profession over 10 years ago and why I think even to this day, it is still a great choice. So I wanted to challenge myself and think really hard what I would do if I had to start all over again. Like for example, if I somehow forgot all of my coding skills, but I retained all of my industry knowledge, what would I do? What steps would I take today in 2024. And I think this is especially an interesting exercise to do because a lot of people are worried about the state of the job market. So I wanted to give my two cents on that. So in the last couple of days, I've been doing quite a lot of research and also thinking about this. And in this video, I want to cover the following things. Number one, what are the most useful skills that you can learn in 2024 if your goal is to break into tech? Number two, how to approach learning and what is the right mindset to have? Number three, how to avoid wasting time and how to actually opt optimize your learning process. Then I want to take a step back and tell you about how the hiring process actually works, because I've been through a lot of interviews as an interviewer. And so I want to tell you what happens behind the scenes and what kind of candidates actually stand out. And then I'll tell you about a set of skills that have stayed tried and true for as long as I have been a software engineer, which is over 10 years now, and why I believe it's very wise to put your effort into learning them properly. Then in the context of that, I will tell you how I would personally prepare to enter the job market today in 2024 if I had to start over. What are the exact steps that I would take? And then finally, I want to end the video with a few lessons I learned early on in my career, some mistakes that I made and things that I would definitely do differently this time around. So make sure you stick around for that. So starting off, what skills should you learn? A lot of people debate Java or C Sharp, Golang or Python, JavaScript or TypeScript. So what would I pick? So in my humble opinion, learning HTML, CSS and JavaScript even today in 2024 is a great place to start. Yes, maybe these skills will not pay you the most in the long run, but they're a great starting point to start developing some early intuition and reasoning about coding. That being said, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on those because I think it's wise to take a step back and actually consider what options are out there that can potentially pay you more in the future. But one of the guiding principles that I would advise any new starter to take is to actually think about optimizing the learning journey. And that means learning technologies that have a wide area of application or that can be applied right away. So let me give you a few examples. So in my humble opinion, JavaScript and TypeScript are better choices to learn as first languages than Java. Now, why is that? Well, it's simply because JavaScript and TypeScript have a wider area of application in the context of web development. You can either work on the backend or frontend or both with those two languages. Whereas with Java, you're going to be limited to backend only, which in the beginning is going to limit your job opportunities. So really the name of the game is maximizing your employability from as early as you possibly can. And along those lines, I actually also want to talk about Python because a lot of people ask me, is Python a great language to start? Now, I understand why many people advise learning Python as one of the first languages. The syntax is clean and it's relatively easy to pick up. But I would say learning Python is a bit of a double edged sword. And here is why. Python, to my understanding, is mostly used in the data science and machine learning community. And so with that, even if you become a Python expert, that doesn't really make you a machine learning scientist or a data scientist. There's a whole new area of skills that you would have to learn and explore to even begin to try to find a job in one of those areas. And to contrast that, let me give you an example of Golang. Golang is a language designed for developing web services. So by learning Golang, you're actually learning about web development. And by the time you get good with Golang, you also know how to build services that are actually useful on the web. And this goes along the same lines of maximizing your employability as early as you possibly can. Python, yes, might be a great language, but you would need to learn so much more. Whereas with languages like JavaScript, TypeScript, and even Golang, you are actually much closer to being employable as soon as you achieve some level of mastery. Now, before we go into the nitty gritty, I just want to touch on the topic of the mindset and how to approach learning in general. Because I see a lot of people get discouraged the moment they see a bunch of errors in the terminal or something happens and their app breaks. But you shouldn't really let it get to you because even the most senior engineers out there encounter errors all the time. And it doesn't mean that your skills are inadequate. It's simply because the technology itself is very fast moving. There's many new things every day that you need to consider, that you need to update, that you need to learn. And so it's just part of the job. And this is what software engineering actually looks like out there in the wild. So don't let it discourage you and just keep going. 
All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is how to optimize your learning and how to avoid wasting time. And the most common way I see people waste time is that they argue about which framework is better. Is it maybe React or is it Svelte? And in my humble opinion, it doesn't matter because as cool as those frameworks are, there is actually a better use for your time when you're learning. And what do I mean by that? So both in front end and on the back end and pretty much in any other area, there is a set of skills that are universally useful and applicable regardless of what framework you're using. And it's so much more worth it to you to learn those skills instead. But what are those skills? So for example, for front end, learning about the HTTP protocol is very useful. Learning about state management, in particular, the unidirectional data flow that is so prevalent in many large applications and is so universally adopted across all frameworks is very useful to learn. And finally, my humble opinion is everyone working on the front end should know about accessibility because we live in a society. And when it comes to backend, I think instead of arguing with other people which framework or language is better, it's much more useful for you to learn about databases, learn about authentication like OICD and OAuth, and also learn about networking and DevOps. Make sure all the things you're deploying are secure. So by focusing your learning effort on universally applicable skills, you're saving a lot of time and you're achieving a greater efficiency with your learning process. Now, before I tell you about the hiring process, if you're enjoying the video, consider giving me a like and Sub, I would really appreciate it. So what about the hiring process? So in the last five years, as a senior engineer, I spent quite a lot of time interviewing candidates for both senior backend and frontend roles. And I wanna give you a few quick tips. So number one, don't try to rush on the interview. A lot of people think that you need to show speed and the ability to solve so many things quickly and think really fast and do all of that stuff. But in reality, the candidates that stood out the most are the ones who had the patience and were able to approach every single problem very methodically and explain everything very clearly. And the second tip is don't try to impress anyone by throwing out buzzwords while you're speaking about your solutions. Let me tell you a quick story. One time we had a guy on an interview for a senior backend role and we gave him a sample problem. And so he came up with a solution and the architecture and everything and then he started explaining his choice of database where he simply said here I would use a NoSQL database because they are faster and you know that was a bit of a red flag because you shouldn't try to make blanket statements like that about any technology because it's never black and white but you know it's the interview and maybe the person is trying to convey as much information as possible before moving on to the next point so I wanted to give him a second chance and I asked okay but what about NoSQL databases makes them faster. And when he answered, I was pretty sure he's not the right candidate because he simply said, well, they're newer, aren't they faster because of that? And to me, that showed he didn't really have the fundamental understanding between different database types and when is a good idea to use one versus the other. So the lesson of the story is try to always fully understand the things that you're talking about. And if you are unsure about something, it's much better to say it than to try and like fake it until you make it, if that makes sense. All right, now we come to my favorite part. And this is something I repeat all the time to everyone who's interested in learning how to code. So there are a set of skills that have stayed tried and true for as long as programming was a thing. And those are data structures, algorithms, and software design. Simply because they underpin every software that you're ever gonna work on. And spending your time learning those really well is time well spent. And that's why a lot of companies have those whiteboards on the interview because they are trying to see if you really understand those three things. In other words, nobody's ever going to quiz you whether or not you know some peculiarity of some web framework. But in pretty much any interview, people are going to be interested to know whether you have a firm grasp of data structures, algorithms, and software design. And so they're going to be asking you questions where they can see if you understand when to use a hash map, when to use a linked list. Are there any useful applications of bubble sort? And the reason this is one of my favorite topics to talk about is that a lot of people who are just trying to break into tech, they skip on these details and they learn a framework or two, maybe they learn React and Tailwind and they call themselves developer. But the moment they hit a situation that requires a little bit of problem solving, a little bit of algorithm knowledge, they hit a wall. And it's very much a limiting factor for them, both at the stage of the interview, but also later when they're actually hired and they try to do the job that they're hired for. And this is why the fundamentals of data structures, algorithms and software design are one of my favorite topics to talk about. All right, now we're getting to the finish line. What would I do? How would I prepare to enter the job market in 2024? There's a couple of things. First, as I already told you, I would start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript until I build a base level understanding of how coding works. 
as a concept. Then I would try to take a step back and pick either backend or frontend as my initial specialization. Because maybe machine learning is very, very cool and is very trendy, but it's also very, very hard. So I would try to stick at first to more of the applied areas so that I can be more employable right away. And then once I've made my choice, I would make sure I create a GitHub account so that I can document my work. And I will come back to this topic a little bit later when I talk about my personal mistakes. But just remember your GitHub profile is very, very important. And then I would try to create one project because now we're coming down to writing your CV. So what do you put on that CV if you have no experience and maybe you're just starting out? The absolute best and most important thing you can put on the CV is a completed project. Project that can be found on GitHub and preferably also maybe hosted somewhere so that somebody who is reviewing your CV can actually click a link and they can experience your project and maybe try out the app that you've made. This is very, very important. And this is the one thing that makes a lot of candidates stand out because you can really see they put a lot of effort into this project. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to be frustrated with this and they're going to say, well, Marco, why is it so that I need experience to join a company as a junior or even an intern? Well, think about it this way. Would you ever hire a car mechanic if that person never actually fixed the car? You wouldn't. You would look elsewhere. And along the same lines, just to stay with the car mechanic analogy, would you rather hire a car mechanic that has a bunch of parts all around the floor and not one single car in his shop that looks like it's in working condition? Or would you rather hire a mechanic that has one car but it's in pristine condition? And same goes for your projects. Don't try to create a bunch of unfinished ones. Focus on one and make it pristine, make it actually good, make it documented, and make it something that you're really proud to put on your CV. And you know, creating such a project is actually very, very hard. It's not easy at all. And I know when you're just starting out, you have all of these questions. Is this good enough? Am I ready to start applying? Those questions won't go away. And this is why most companies actually have mentoring programs internally where senior engineers are constantly mentoring juniors because it takes a lot of experience to actually know if something is good enough. And because having guidance in your journey is so important, I actually partnered with Course Careers. So let me tell you quickly about what course careers is and how you can take advantage of that. If you imagine the spectrum of all learning resources you can find online, on one side you have courses which are focused on a specific skill set or a specific technology. For example, you have a React course. And on the other side, you have boot camps which are very intensive and very expensive, so not a lot of people can afford to join. But in my opinion, what most people actually need to get a job is something in between. It's course material with guidance. In course careers, you can actually learn about React and JavaScript and TypeScript and all the other skills, but they will also help you prepare for job interviews. And they have companies who work with them who actually offer job interviews to the graduates of the course. Now, why is that? Why would a company offer an interview to a course graduate? Well, it's because of the way course careers is actually structured. You have course materials that you go through on your own, but whenever you have questions, you actually have mentors who are there to help you. They will give you feedback on your projects. They will help you learn all the important things and they will prepare you for interviews, which is crazy. Critical, and this is why I believe it is such a great value. Now, let me take you through the course to give you a quick preview of what you can expect. So the course starts off with an introduction to HTML and JavaScript and then develops into teaching you all about React and Tailwind so that you can develop your front end skills. Then there is a section about Git and Bash, which are very important tools when it comes to professional software development. But my favorite section of the course is when you get to learn about data structures and algorithms. And I really love that there are so many lessons about those fundamental skills because they are so important as I already explained. Next up, there is a whole section about learning Go and backend development. And just before starting to work on your final project, you get to learn about software design, software testing, and clean code, which is very important. The final project is where you actually tie everything together and you build a full stack app. And this is a great experience that will teach you exactly the kind of project you need to build in order to put on your CV so that you can stand out among other candidates. And talking about candidates, I actually watched a very interesting interview with this guy called Max. He recently finished the course and was able to go from being a carpenter to a developer in four months. Now granted, he did put in a lot of effort into this transition, but it just goes to show that it is actually very 
very, very doable today in 2024. And this is why I believe Course Careers is such an amazing resource for a lot of people. So as you can see, the real reason I'm actually personally excited about course careers is that they put so much emphasis on the fundamental skills. And this is probably why companies are also excited to work with them and more importantly, to work with the graduates of the course. So if you use the link in my description, you'll get $50 off from the main course. And actually there's an introductory course that is totally free. So you can see if this format of learning is actually something you enjoy. All right. I want to continue with the lessons I learned early on in my career and what I would do differently this time around. And there are three lessons. Number one, and this is so important, make sure to document all your work, even if it's very early on. I made a mistake that I made so many cool projects that just died somewhere on my hard drive and I never got to show them to anyone because they were never really in a finished or presentable state. I just made something, I forgot about it, I switched to another project, then I forgot about that and when it came to the point to actually do an interview, I was like, wait a minute, I actually don't have links to those projects. And that's simply because I didn't document them and I didn't put them on GitHub. And this is why it's very, very important for you to create your GitHub account early on, learn some fundamentals of Git and make sure everything you make is out there presentable for anyone to see. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two, when I started working, I actually started working as a freelancer and I spent a lot of time freelancing in the beginning. And while that's great for acquiring some early experience and maybe something to build for your portfolio, later in my career, when I started working as a senior engineer, and when I saw just how much effort companies put into mentoring juniors, I realized just how much I was missing out by freelancing. Because in freelancing, you don't get a mentor, you're there to do a job and somebody is paying you for results only. So in other words, I was only ever a mentor, never really a mentee. And I really wish there was something like course career when I was getting started so that I can get a mentor early on. And finally, the last mistake that I made early in career is that I didn't get involved with any community. I thought that I could just do it all by myself. I was a little bit arrogant, but then I struggled with accountability. I struggled with completing my project because I lacked the motivation. And later when I set up my discord server, I actually found out that even for my projects today, it keeps me accountable if I share a screenshot or two, or maybe ask for feedback. And I notice a lot of people are enjoying sharing their projects as well. So just make sure you get involved with a community. There's a discord link in the description. Stay away from toxic Twitter. If you can make sure those communities are a little bit more curated so that you can stay on track with your projects and make sure you stay accountable to the people that you enjoy spending your time with. So those are my lessons. Those are my mistakes. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a like and sub and I'll see you in the next one.